getting ready to go to town this morning. I'm going to take the forerunner here. Matt was in front of me, so he's having to having to move the truck. That's something we have to do here on the Goat Bluff is jockey the cars back and forth so whoever can get out. I remember the days when there wasn't but two cars here and we didn't have to do that. But things change and people, when your kids grow up and they all start driving and get better times and you get more vehicles yourself. I guess he's waiting on me and here I am talking. <laughs> he's looking back here like, what are you doing? Okay, let's go to town and get my groceries, Granny's groceries and Corey's groceries. Nobody's drove it in a day or two, so I have to let it warm up here a minute. I always tell the last person that drove it, it was Matt because I had to move up the seat. Foggy in Brasstown this morning. This is normally one of the prettiest views of the mountains, but they're all fogged in today. You can't see them. First stop, Walmart pickup. I love the Walmart pickup. I've been doing it since even way before COVID. As soon as it come available, I started doing it. So I'm gonna pick up my groceries, Granny's groceries and Corey's groceries. They know me uh, every week when I come, they know I'm getting them all. They don't even ask anymore. They just bring them all out at once. Next stop, gotta get gas. Last stop of the day. I'm gonna stop at Ingalls and then I'm gonna head home. I love to do the Walmart pickup, the grocery pickup, just because it's so easy. But there are some things that I prefer to buy at Ingles. And then sometimes Walmart doesn't have what you need. So that's why I stop at both places. My Ingles trip is really quick and uh, short, though. So it doesn't take me long to go in there. And then I'll just have to go home and uh, give Granny her groceries and then take Corey's out to her. The reason I'm getting Corey's is just because, you know, with a newborn, it's just kind of hard to get back in the swing of things, of of getting your groceries. Granny used to get mine when I first had Corey and Katie, and, and then when they got a little bigger, she would come stay at my house and let me go get groceries, and then I'd come back. And then eventually they got big enough to where I felt comfortable taking them both with me when they, you know, could sit up and uh, wasn't just the little infants like Woodrow is now. I really love driving the Forerunner. It was my vehicle for so many years, the whole growing up of Corey and Caddy's years. They started out in my little Escort, and then the rest of their time was spent in the Forerunner here. And it's just a great vehicle. Got lots of memories. I used to get Granny in it, and I'd take Granny to get her groceries in those days. I'd, we'd get, I'd go by and pick up Granny before I took the girls to school, and then we would... Uh, take them to school, drop them off, and then me and her, and a lot of times Alex, the little boy I kept, we'd come to town and get groceries, and we would separate in the stores. You know, Granny would go her way, and me and Alex would go our way, and so she went with me for many years like that, and then when she got to where she just wasn't able to um, get around in the stores as good as when I started getting hers, so I've got hers for many years now. Like I said, when Walmart first started their uh, pick up where you could just order it and pick it up. That was like, oh my gosh, I got two hours of my life back every week. So I was doing it even pre-COVID when they first started it here in Murphy. Okay, got all the groceries. Now I'm ready to head to Granny's. While I was in there, I was thinking about um, thinking about all those days gone by like I was talking about. And then I remembered I left out one car. I had a Honda before I got this 4Runner. Matt made me trade it for the 4Runner. I was so upset that day, but it was the best decision he ever made. It was really the right decision. Anyway, so Corey and Katie did ride around in it for about a year. And then they, then we've got the 4Runner. I'm gonna head home, like I said, and take Granny her stuff and Corey her stuff. I like to come early and get it over with, so I've not been gone that long from home, and now I'm gonna to get to go back home. But today is unusual in that I'm gonna actually come back to town. I'm gonna to do unload all those groceries and basically get back in the car and come back to town because I'm gonna go eat with my friends. We all get together for our birthdays. Now you may be thinking, Tipper, your birthday's not in September. It's not. Often what happens is life gets in the way, and even though we're getting together for each other's birthdays, it may be a month or more, <laughs> sometimes even two or three months later that we actually get together. But today, we're getting together to celebrate my birthday, which was back in August. Got Granny's delivered. Got me some old lettuce for the chickens. 
and there's always a container or a bowl where I've brought her something. So I got one of my bowls. Now I'm off to Corey's. I got Corey's groceries dropped off, played with Woodrow a little bit. I think he's needing a nap. So we'll see you later, Corey. I'm ready for my second trip to town today. You may notice I'm in a different car. I'm gonna take Katie's car for her, be nice to her, do something sweet for Katie today and get it inspected. It needs to be inspected and get the tag renewed. I got all my groceries put up, got Granny's uh, delivered to her and helped her put them up, got Corey's to her and uh, already been a busy morning, but now I'm looking forward to getting this done for Katie and also seeing my friends again. Same red light as this morning. The sun shines out, but the fog's still obscuring the mountains, beautiful mountains you can usually see back through there. It was a really foggy morning this morning. It's really laying thick and it's not burned off yet, even though it's 10 o'clock. So I'm gonna make one more stop before I go meet the girls for lunch. This is Blue Moon Elise. It's in Murphy, downtown Murphy. It's a wonderful, wonderful store. I love their products. I rarely ever come in here. So you may be thinking, how do you love their products, Tipper? Everybody knows that. So a lot of times that's what people gets me for Christmas. The girls, especially Corey and Katie, they know that. And they even told my Sunday school class this past Christmas how much I loved it. So they got me a gift certificate for here and I've not spent it yet. So today I thought it would be a great time for me to come in and spend that gift certificate. I love their soaps. I love everything, but I'll show you my favorites is the soap and then also the sprays. So I'll show you some of that. So these are the, I call them little shorty bars. I usually get the full ones. It smells so good in here. I wish you could smell it. They've got this whole section here for fall. These are, let's see, cinnamon leaf. Mm, smells like cinnamon. It's great. Smells like fall. Here's some that's all spice. There's little, I usually don't get ones with little pieces in them, but that's pretty. Let's just spice it up. That looks nice. I really love the lemongrass, so I'll get several of those with my gift certificate. I'm a real, uh, lover of patchouli. Some people don't like that smell, but I really adore it. So I'll get some of these, even though it does have a little bit of stuff in it. I carried some of my soap up there and then they told me there was baskets. I didn't see them when I first come in. This is an interesting one for bugs. I've never tried it. I love the smell of tea tree. A lot of people don't. It, it does smell kind of like a damp basement. <laughs> That's kind of what it smells like to me. Of course, tea tree has all kinds of medicinal properties, but that's a neat one. This is neat. This is um, honeycomb calendula, calendula soap. So we love the properties of calendula. Corey and Katie make calendula oil. It's such a soothing. If you have a burn or a scrape or a cut or something, it will, I swear, heal it overnight. So that's really interesting. Okay, I've come, looked around at all the soaps, but I've come back for more of the lemongrass and more of the patchouli. And I gotta try something different. So I'm gonna try, this is lavender. Um, well, this one's just got lavender, that says. Let's see, where's the one I was gonna try? And I wanna try something different. So I'm gonna try the lavender clove. So here's some of the other things that they have. This is some of the, the body sprays that I just, I love. Corey and Katie know that. So I have some, uh, that's usually what I get for Christmas and for my birthday and thing. I like this one is Be Calm. That's one that I like. Also this one, Be Relaxed. But this is probably my favorite one. Be Enhanced. It's my favorite. I love the smell of it. 
And then of course they have the, uh, just the bigger one in patchouli. I love that one a lot. The, and all of those are in the larger size too. The Energizer, I like that one a lot too. It's bee stimulated, that one. But this is on a daily basis. These are the, the smells that I wear. Oh, and look up here, look at their beautiful mugs. I can just tell, let me look on the bottom of one of them. Yep, that Rob Withrow made them because mine look about like that, except with my logo, of course. So they've got beautiful mugs too, made by Rob. Okay, got me some soap, thanks to the Sunday school class. And got to enjoy walking around in here since I don't usually come. If you do, Time. I want you to, of course, check out the soap and all the wonderful things they have. Those sprays, if you like, like an all-natural spray to make yourself smell good, those are great. And I'll share some more details about uh, the store once I get home. I got to go meet the girls now. They're not going to know where I'm at. I'm running late. Made it back home. Always so nice to come home, even if I just went to town. It's my refuge and the best place in the world to be is at home. So made it home and I'm glad. I had a good day, but I'm glad to be home. I forgot to mention when I was in Blue Moon Elise, I've got one of their little cards here. You can also buy their stuff online. So it's Blue Moon Elise, that's E-L-I-S-E dot -E com. And I'll put that link in the description too, though, below. And also another thing they do, especially if you're local, they offer soap making classes. So when you go to their website, you can find out all that information uh, on their website if you're a local person and would like to, like to learn how to, to make soap. I really like their products because they smell good, because they, the soap lathers up nicely, all those kind of things. But it's also, you know, it's all health, really a healthy um, thing to use on your body and the lady there Rachel that owns the place uh, She is really into health and making sure that everything's healthy But I like that she says uh, being healthy doesn't have to be hard. In fact, it can be crazy fun and easy That's kind of her her little tagline so you can jump over to her website and learn learn more about that I really enjoyed getting to see my friends again. It's been a while since we all got together we there's four of us and we we get together for each other's birthday always get together at christmas and then usually we try to get together more often than that but it doesn't always happen just to catch up with each other we know each other all four of us from working at tri-county at the college in those days uh, back then we got to eat lunch together every day so we were you know that was really great um, and even then we would go out to eat for each other's birthdays so that was nice but i really love all of them so it was wonderful to get to catch up with them and hear what's going on in their lives and of course they want to hear what's going on in mine and see baby pictures and all that kind of stuff so i hope you enjoyed uh, going to town with me and and uh, seeing blue moon elise and kind of tagging along with me today getting groceries is hard it's a hard day even if uh, if you don't go in the store like i don't have to at walmart anymore just the hub hub of doing it and then you know helping granny and then helping corey and then today i even you know helped katie a little bit with her car and then got to go eat and got to go visit the blue moon elise which i never do so it's a really nice day but sort of sort of tires you out granny always said that that getting groceries by the time you got them and come home and put them up she was just plumb wore out so it like i said it's a different kind of video than i usually do but i do think it's a good two things a lot of people ask me to show places that we go so that's always interesting for people that don't live here that have never been here to see see what it's like and um, I think it it's good to always uh, show people what life in Appalachia is like a real slice of life in Appalachia I always talk about the uh, ever since I started writing for the blind pig and the acorn the cardboard cutout that's often held up it's not like that it's not uh, it's varied people's life uh, daily lives are different not everybody's like mine but i'd say mine's pretty average for here so that's always interesting uh, for you to see that and i like to showcase that my friend david caner and corin caddy's friend he's no longer with us but the first time he ever come to our house he told me he said tipper i didn't know what to expect i didn't know whether you'd live in a log cabin you know with uh, no running water or if you'd live in a mansion and he kind of laughed and I said, well, you know, it's definitely not a mansion, but it's definitely not a log cabin with no running water either. So I guess, David, we're somewhere really in between. 
And of course he was teasing partly, but I think partly he didn't know what to expect. He'd read, you know, my writings. He'd talked to Corey and Katie and a lot. That's how he knew them first through the folk school every summer when he would come. So he was curious. He was curious if we lived the, the same way he did. He was from New England, from Massachusetts, or, you know, how we lived. And, um, you know, he was just really curious about it. And I think that's common with a lot of people. They, um, and I'm, and in the same way, it's common for people to be curious about where I live here in Appalachia. It's also common for me to be curious about where they live. If they live in Alaska, if they live in California, wherever it is they live. Um, but I think it's nice for people to know that Appalachia is just about like the rest of the United States. Yes, we have a wonderful, beautiful culture for sure, but we have the same, you know, we're getting groceries, we're going to the grocery store. We're, you know, maybe going to buy some nice soap, meeting with our friends, all those kind of things. It's very similar. So that's one thing. And then the other thing would be today is a day that really highlights part of Appalachian culture. If you watched the video with Granny last week, what got me to thinking about this actually, one of the questions was for her was, what is the, the thing about Appalachian culture that you wish everybody could have or the most important? I don't remember exactly how the phrase, how it was phrased, the question, but that was her answer was that everyone would be close, the closeness of family, you know, that that was, she wished the whole world could be like that, the closeness of family and friends and neighbors, but family. And Appalachia really is a family-centered culture. And today's a good example of that. Uh, me getting Granny's groceries like I've done for so many years even the fact that before that I took her to get them, but then before that, when she got mine, when I had children with little bitty kids, you know, and then that I'm kind of continuing that on with Corey today, helping her get her groceries because Woodrow's just little. And even today, helping Katie, you know, get her car inspected. Certainly she could do that. She could put Ira in the car and, and go and do all that. But it's just harder when you have little ones. And, and so it was just something nice I could do for her. So that f family leaning on uh, family is a really huge part of the culture of Appalachia. So today really highlights that. Again, I'm, I hope you enjoyed going along with me today, and I'm always glad when you stop by to help me celebrate Appalachia.